Hello friends, hello family, hello brethren. Welcome again to our lesson discussion uh, for the third quarter, which is making friends for Jesus, the joy of sharing in his ministry. Welcome again to lesson 11 uh, summary, which is sharing the word, uh, the story of Jesus. In this lesson, we come to study so many things, which include uh, Jesus, the basis of our testimony, the transforma transformation power of personal testimony, uh, telling the story of Jesus and uh, testifying with assurance, and lastly, something worth testifying about. Welcome to this lesson uh, study, uh, and we are going to start with a word of prayer. Let us pray. A kind of loving master, we thank you for this, how it enabled us to see. Lord, as you're going to study your word, we you pray that you may lead us till the end. Thank you because you're in control, may and be glad in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, our lesson for this week, our memory text come from the book of uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, which I'm going to read on your hearing. I'm using uh, the book of uh, King, uh, King James Fashion, and we are reading the first epistle of John. That is 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, which says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The Son of God here, we are talking about Jesus Christ. Paul, uh, John was an, a follower of Jesus Christ and he wrote mostly about him and the testimony, the first witness that he had about Jesus Christ. As opposed to uh, some in uh, the lesson, the, pre, the gone lesson, the lessons we have studied, we noticed that there is nobody else who will uh, witness more eloquently than someone who has the personal witness, like Paul was a personal encounter with Jesus Christ on his road to Damascus. There is nobody who ha can bring uh, the scriptures uh, more uh, in a way that is more fulfilling to others or in a more uh, amazing witness that is a true witness of conversion. No matter how much you know the theology of path, how much you can argue about your doctrine, how much you think that you have the right uh, kind of truth, it doesn't matter. As long as nobody can argue with your witness, your personal testimony about Jesus Christ, how he has transformed you, how you knew the truth that was given uh, to you by Jesus himself, nobody else can give such a testimony. And in this week, we are going to study about Jesus. And here we're going to know that uh, when Christ is the center of every doctrine and age doct uh, biblical teachings, we are much uh, reflex and uh, when Christ is the center of every doctrine and each biblical teaching reflects his character, those we are sharing the scriptures with are much more likely to accept his word. We are more, we can accept easily when it is from the Bible, when it says it is written. And on the Sunday, but Jesus, the basis of our testimony, Jesus being the foundation, we are going to read from the book of Ephesians chapter uh, 2, verse 1 to 10. Every Christian have their own personal testimony of our and personal story of how they were changed. But today we are going to note uh, the writings of Paul to the charge of Ephesians. That is, uh, before we knew Christ, what happened? That is, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And it says, And you heard 
he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh, uh, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, and among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Uh, it is very clear that there are some things that we do before we became Christians. This, uh, as mentioned by Paul, to the charge of evasions. This include the desires of the flesh, wanting to fulfill the desires of the flesh, and also walking, walking according to the principalities and powers of this world. That is not uh, being disobedient, walking. Uh, the chapter three tells us that uh, in terms in the lust of our flesh, that is a conversation based on the lust of the flesh and fulfilling the desires of flesh and of the mind and our pinage we were pinage the children of wrath once we sinned we all fall short of the glory of God and we were uh, we were pinage the children of wrath but what happened when we uh, changed it is also in the same book Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and uh, to uh, 10. And we are going to read. But God, who is rich in the mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us. That is the first step. God took the first step. He loved us. Then, uh, through his mercy, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. Yes, we, he saved us by grace, not by our own deeds and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes, he has enabled us to go before the throne of God. And also, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, this is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are in his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. It is uh, by grace that you are saved, not according to our works, but it is because of it, by his grace that you are saved so that we will not push about what we have. Life has taken on new meaning and has new purpose. John declares, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. He has enabled us to sit together. He said, when we, he will be charging the uh, world, uh, the saints will sit in the throne with him by his side. They will be, uh, they will be together. Now we know that when we are changed, we became good workmanship of Jesus Christ, created in Christ Jesus unto good work, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. That is, walking according to the will of God, being justified by faith. So we are justified by faith of Jesus Christ. This workmanship divines our purpose to work in God's finance. The next is the transformation power of personal testimony. Remember, there is the sons of Zebedee, James and John, who Jesus revered to as sons of thunder. Why? On their way to Samaria, one day uh, they uh, went to a certain place when they siege uh, to lodge over uh, night, but they were denied even the small, the lowest of the accommodation to hire for the night. Hence they ask God, can you do like Elijah that we command fire to come from heaven and consume these people? But Jesus uh, refused, their, uh, denied them their proposal. 
and this he love he showed the man of love that he said he said that we should love these people rather than doing what they want us to do that we should hate uh, them like the way they treat us to treat them the way they treat us he know we know that Jesus uh, no knew the the uh, principle of it. Jesus knew uh, the heavens government orders that is the the order of the day in heaven is the principle of love so Jesus rebuked the disciples and they went their way but Jesus showed them that the the uh, uh, the way that the way they treated them that is uh, they are left what Jesus did was much amazing he I think he tried to reason with the Samaritans in with their own reasoning capacity he tried to reason with them instead of being hungry like John and James who were angry and wanted a fire to come down from heaven and to consume them he tried he became channel, showed his loving kindness and the compassion towards them. That they ne didn't know uh, the Savior. That they, he, did, he took the opportunity to talk to, with them and to preach unto them. And in the epistle of, first epistle of John, he realized that there is more than 40 words of love. That is love that is written in the book of John and right now we're going to read from the book of first John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 and it says that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled on the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that we ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto thee that you uh, your joy may be full. The full, uh, be full of joy. That is the title. It says, uh, once we have been transformed by the power of personal testimony, having not, uh, the assurance that we are saved by Jesus Christ, that he has died for us, that he has manifested his life for us, that by his grace, we, we are transformed by acceptance of his saving plan. We became new members. We became also, he gave us, according to uh, the first John chapter 3, verse 1, that when we accepted, uh, I'm going to read, it says, uh, Behold what man of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world know it us not because it knew him not that he gave us the power to be called his children though we were sinners after he has redeemed us he's brought us as pack next to his throne he make us he called us his children and he urges us to love one another as he also loved us that uh, by the love that he showed to us, to die for us, that you should also love others the same way that you may win others to Christ. That is the power of, of testimony. And also in, uh, that is in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 11. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, talk of love God and keep his commandments. If you love God and you don't keep his commandment the only thing that God loves in everyone is keeping his commandment that is because uh, the ruling in heaven is based on commandment God himself is the commandment God is the word so if God is the word and you disobey the commandment it means the desire for God in you is, doesn't exist 
So Christ will flow from our lives and we will be a blessing to those around us. Uh, if we love others and do God's will, that is transformative power of personal testimony. Did you know that uh, the first missionaries who were sent by Jesus was not the disciples? Uh, the first missionaries, as according to this week lesson, were the demoniacs. It is so amazing that uh, on his way to a place called uh, in the, in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 to 34, there is Gargesens. Gargesens is a place that Jesus was walking through. This place is in besides the Sea of Galilee. And he found this man who was in agony, was uh, had been F tormented, he was demoniac possessed, and he went to the far of breaking chains because of the, the possession that he had. He was he had so much power that he broke chains, and he would took stones and cut his own skin, his own flesh, with stones, and. He was in much agony and he needed Christ. And when he saw Jesus passing by, said, according to Mark, it was one person, but according to Matthew, they were two demoniacs. So, but the essence here is carrying the story. What Jesus, uh, telling the story of Jesus, the way it is. Uh, Jesus says that uh, the, the Bible tells us that this man, has been facing this for several years. He was in in a, in a they lived in much isolated places. Imagine uh, they were living, they came out of the tombs. You know what tombs are that is graveside. And their way they they wanted to prevent anybody who wanted to burst to that place. But there came Jesus and they realized him and they asked him, Jesus, this, uh, they said in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 8 verse 29 says, And behold, they cried out saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of God? And thou come hither to torment us before the time. And uh, they recognized Jesus Christ here. And also they asked him to throw them. Uh, into the swines, not to throw them away, he says, uh, and there was a good way off from them and hard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, serve us to go uh, away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. So Jesus ordered the demoniacs to go into the swines. And the swines uh, became uh, possessed with the, the, the demons and they went into the Sea of Galilee and they perished in the sea. So those who are guarding the, those who are guarding the swine, when they saw the scenario, they ran into the city and they tell, told unto the owners and the people in the city, of Galilee because we know Galilee, the Sea of Galilee is surrounding, uh, surrounded by 10 cities, that is the, sea, uh, the cities of Decapolis. So the people of Decapolis came and saw what was going on. Arriving there, they found the men, the gentlemen who had been demon possessed, uh, hearing from, sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing from the them from him the word of God. Jesus was preaching unto these people for sh the shortest sermon that has ever been conducted whereby people uh, followed, believed and they followed Jesus Christ. But Jesus asked them 
to go into the city according to the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 12 to 20. One of the demoniacs later came to Jesus and says, Master, I will follow you. But Jesus said, Go unto thy friends and tell them the great things that have happened to you. This was the first time uh, preaching that uh, the demoniac has gotten from Jesus Christ. And remember how people will believe in him when they saw him, a man who was in frustration, who is now healed, a man who is changed, he is now a new man in Christ Jesus. And uh, he was going to tell the great things that Jesus has told him. It's so worthy when you have our personal testimony and we tell our friends and others so that they may be changed. Also, in the wilderness of God, we are learning testifying with assurance. How much assurance how do we have that when we testify, we have assurance that we'll go to heaven. We have assurance that the word we read is actually the word of God. Let's read from the book of the book of First John, chapter five, verse eleven to thirteen. It says, "And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life, and this life is in His word. He had, he that had the Son had life, and he that had not the Son of God had not life." These things have I written unto you that believed on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. We read from the Bible the word of Jesus Christ, because that he gives eternal life, that he, we have the assurance that he gives the eternal life. Also the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 to 22 tells us to all first faith that we have because we believe and if we've believed fully according to uh, the saving blood of Jesus Christ we know we'll be saved so we should hold first the faith in him saving power of the gospel we have told of the saving power of the gospel also in the book of first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 and verse 2 that salvation in Jesus Christ is given by free. That he said, uh, Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 42, 45 verse 22, that look to me and be saved all ye ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. He is God and there is no other who will save. And also said, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, uh, Roma, according to the writings of Paul to the people of Romans in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 that he adds also that we have the assurance that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus that is Romans 8 verse 1 and also John confirms that he who had the son had life he who does not have the son of God does not have life that is, what we should believe today is that uh, we should live today for the future. We should live uh, the joy that we need to feel when we will be in heaven. We should practice today and have the passion to be in heaven. We always have the free choice to, no matter what we know, no matter uh, how much we have believed, we always have free joys, either to go back to our sins or to continue. But I pray to you that I pray you that you may hold fast the faith and trust in God and God alone. The Thursday birth thought of something worth testifying about. Say, uh, the a brother Paul wrote in Colossians chapter two, verse twenty that. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the sons of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And there is ultimate commitment that Jesus gave that we must have first 
before we qualify to be uh, in his kingdom says even one desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me that is the book of uh, Luke chapter 9 verse 23 because taking up his cross taking, it was the pain that he passed through when he was in the cross a pains of agony until the say, the the say that he made on the cross that lord god why have thou forsaken me it was such painful that is when god uh, looked aside and left jesus alone and said uh, to gather uh, to deal with the dead the penalty of sin once and for all that uh, said it is painful at times to give up cherished desires sometimes we have some things that we hold and we will not want to let go so that we may be saved but no matter what we have no matter how precious it is the habits that we are not willing to forego and uh, but through us for doing the pain the rewards uh, that Jesus gives us, that he cared for our sins, that he died for us, it was a greatest reward that no one else can over. It was the greatest over of all. You know, there, there, are, there are several stories of how people were changed, that uh, they were from different kind of situations. They were, uh, they forgot several things that was of this world, but all of these that does, doesn't qualify them to be in heaven. All what qualifies is the faith of Jesus Christ. We have uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's according to the book of John 10. In John 10, verse 10, it's, uh, uh, John gives us the testimony of Jesus Christ where, uh, himself. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, Paul also gave his testimony according to Jesus. And we are going to read of John. John 10, verse 10, it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy. But the Son of Man and I am come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus came with life, and that we may have it more. But according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it says, uh, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Is a righteousness, a wisdom and a sanctification. He is sanctified when you have uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ is ready to make us whole. Think about the times he has given you the strength to get through the difficult experience of your life. Many times, the testimony about Jesus Christ is so worthy. It's, uh, it can change many lives than you can imagine. Thank you very much for being with me. We have come to the end of this lesson program. And until the next time, may the Lord bless you. Let us pray. I can love and master. Thank you for this lesson uh, summary. Lord, we pray that you may forgive us unrighteousness that you just said against your will. Lord, forgive us. And we pray that you may give this word and testimony in our hearts that we may do your work we may participate in your workmanship thank you lord because you are in control may name be clear in jesus name amen and amen uh, may the lord bless you in jesus name